I overhauled my game again. Here's the game before I overhauled it. And here's the game after I overhauled it. Before I get into what's changed, let me give you the elevator pitch of the overhauled game. Gun Game is a roguelite shooter where you fight through waves of enemies by crafting your guns and collecting unique, game-changing passive abilities. I'll talk more about this new theme a little later in the video, but first, why did I decide to overhaul the game? Again, it all boils down to these three words. It wasn't fun. I originally had a grand vision of basically creating an Enter the Gungeon clone with lots of unique weapons, enemies, bosses, and environments. And while I still like that idea, I discovered how difficult it was to make this kind of game fun. Generating dungeon rooms and levels in a compelling manner, along with enough rewards and variety to keep the player engaged, was a balancing problem that I didn't feel equipped to tackle. There was, however, another big reason why I decided to overhaul the game, and that was my discovery of a few indie games. These games were Vampire Survivors, Brotato, and Tiny Rogues. After playing each of these games, I felt a huge temptation to make a game similar to them. They were so fun and addicting that I wanted to recreate that feeling in my own way. I started bargaining with myself, promising that I would just take a little bit of time off from Gun Game to work on a small project, something I was sure was just a passing obsession. But I was afraid of this temptation ultimately leading to the abandonment of Gun Game again. Gun Game already had a solid foundation. I could morph it into the type of game I was tempted to make. After some more consideration, and determined not to abandon Gun Game yet again, I decided that yes, I would overhaul it. What are the features of Vampire Survivors, Brotato, and Tiny Rogues that are so compelling? I actually documented a lot of my findings in an attempt to answer this question. I think it comes down to the fact that these games are condensed roguelites, meaning they give the player the essence of the roguelite genre immediately and frequently. These games waste no time giving the player stats, passives, weapons, and of course, enemies. Player power ramps up quickly and frequently. And the fascinating thing about these games is that the environments are all relatively static. Tiny Rogues, in particular, has rooms that are all a square with no obstacles and no prop pieces. Brotato is a single room and enemies spawn out of nowhere. With this newfound knowledge, I spent the past month or so working on the overhaul of Gun Game. I drastically simplified the environment to a single room and trashed all of my level generation code. I made the enemies spawn in waves, with a boss appearing every fifth level. But most importantly, I created a wave reward system that gives the player upgrades to choose from after every single wave. Here is the wave reward screen. The player can choose one of three passive abilities every wave. These function like permanent upgrades that are designed to change or enhance gameplay during the run. After selecting a passive, the player is presented with a gun part reward. This gun part is rolled completely randomly. The player can choose to put this part in one of the guns, or the player can choose to re-roll the part up to two times. I really like this feature because it gives a little bit of risk-reward decision-making to re-rolling, but also gives the player three possible gun parts to choose from after every wave. I'm trying to make sure that the player feels like they are always progressing as the game goes on. I don't want the player to feel like the rewards that are being presented to them are totally useless. There are currently many player passives to choose from, including but not limited to both guns being reloaded on dash, dashing clears nearby bullets, and health and stamina increases. Of course, many more player passives are on the way. Subscribe to stay up to date with my progress to see what comes next. Additionally, gun parts, of which there are three types, the barrel, the receiver, and the magazine, can each have up to two passives of its own, which I'm calling affixes. Some of the most interesting ones I've built so far are poison is applied to enemies on hit, bullets split when hitting enemies, 
and fire rate is increased as the magazine depletes. So that means as the game is currently, the player gets a passive ability every wave and each of the two guns can have six affixes for 12 affixes total. And it's not outside the realm of possibility that I will increase this number further. You can probably already see the limitless possibilities of this structure. The game is already ridiculously fun in my opinion, despite the fact that there isn't a whole lot of content yet and there are a lot of rough spots. I didn't just spend time on the new systems though. There were a lot of other major changes that I made in the time between this video and the last devlog. You may have noticed this already, but the player has been completely redone. He's now an old man wizard. I went overboard on this character, going so far as to create a procedurally animated beard. I was hoping this beard would flap around haphazardly as you move, but it's really not that noticeable. Unfortunately, I am not really happy with this character still, so expect yet another visual overhaul in the future. If anyone has suggestions on what they want the player to be, please leave a comment. I added a crystal gun. Aside from adding thematic variety, the crystal magazine also has bullets that come with the guaranteed affix of bullets splitting when hitting enemies. I added a banana gun whose bullets oscillate as they travel. In order to achieve this oscillation, I created a framework that enables me to manipulate the path of bullets in real time. This will open up a ton of possibilities for other creative weapons in the future. Gold now drops from enemies and is collectible by the player. Currently, there's no use for gold, but I am ideating on how to introduce unique waves to spend currency. Enemies now have a spawn animation. A red X animates on the ground at the spawn position, and then a bloody spray effect plays where the enemy is created. Under the hood, I added a stat scaling framework that allows me to carefully craft the power curves of enemies and weapons. And finally, I started work on implementing sounds. This is a very rough draft and will change in the future, but here's how it sounds so far. There was a lot more that I worked on that I can't mention in this video, but suffice it to say, these past number of weeks have been very productive. I am having more fun working on this game than I have ever had in my history of making games. I'm really excited about this new direction and all of the potential that it brings. I would love to hear your thoughts about the new changes, so as always, leave your feedback and critique in the comments. Your engagement with me as I build Gun Game is greatly appreciated. Subscribe to stay up to date with my progress, and I will see you in the next devlog. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. If you want to learn how to build a 2D platformer in the Godot engine, check out my Udemy course, link in the description. If you want to support my work, you can pick up one of my games on Steam or itch.io, links in the description as well.